Okay, so we're going to talk about traditional bows a little bit here. Uh, I've received some phone calls and some emails, even some messages on Facebook, people wanting to know more about my traditional bows. And uh, so we're going to dive a little bit deeper into these um, and kind of show you some more specifics, show what they look like at full draw. I'll give you a, a draw curve, some illustrations, so you can kind of see for yourself if uh, any of these bows are going to work out well for you. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Matt from Coyote Creek Archery. I appreciate you watching these videos. Uh, never really in my wildest dreams that I think that uh, I would have so many people watching these videos and interested in what I've got going on here. Uh, so I appreciate all the comments and uh, phone calls and those types of things that people have contacted me. And so I want to share a little bit more about the bows that I have here um, at Coyote Creek Archery that I've been building for several years. And uh, just give you some more specifics so you can see if a bow is going to be a good fit for you. I know if you're not local, um, if you're at a distance and, and viewing things online, it's hard to tell um, just the shape of the grip, what the draw cycle or the draw curve is going to look like, uh, just some of the specifics of the bow. So I want to give you a little bit more information and see if it's maybe something that's going to be right for you or maybe it's something that you want to steer away from. Either way, um, you get some more information out of it and you know um, helps you to make a, a better decision on purchasing a bow. The first bow that I have here is the 60 inch Smoky Recurve. Let's take a look at the brace height. And um, on this bow, we are looking at right at seven and a quarter inches. So it is a little bit of a shorter brace height. And that comes from the preload in the limbs. If, if you've been on the website at all, you know that I preloaded these limbs just by a couple of degrees, uh, shortens up the brace height and um, gives the bow just a little bit more speed. So that is kind of what that design was meant for. The, uh, the grip is a little bit, I would say a little bit more contoured, and I'll do my best to kind of show you up close of what you're looking at here. I, I V this out right here where your hand is going to fit in. If you um, look at your grip where you, between your thumb and your index finger where it makes that V, I kind of V that out to, to have a good shape for to fit my hand. It's got a, a thumb shelf, and then I try to square off a little bit. This is a little bit more squared off where uh, the palm of your hand, where your lifeline is going to fit right in into that grip. Um, to me, it feels really good. It just has a nice natural fit, and I don't feel like uh, my hand can really shift anyway. It's always a pretty consistent spot for my hand to be in, uh, and I know some people prefer that and some don't. So again, that's just a personal preference. Uh, if you have been on the website, you may notice that I do offer uh, bows that are not completely finished. I do have some people that are up to the task of um, trying to finish out a bow to fit them a little bit better. So, you know, I can do all, all of the pre-work for you, get the limbs tillered, get the uh, limbs tip, limb tip shaped, and uh, maybe get the shelf and things basically cut out. And then you can come in and finish it yourself. It takes a little bit of cost out of it for me and for you as well. Uh, so you can purchase the bow a little bit cheaper that way, and then you can come in and finish that, that grip to fit you the best way, um, the way it's going to fit you the, fit you the best. So I know a lot, not a lot of people are interested in doing that or up to that type of challenge, and that's fine, uh, but that is an option if that's something that you want to consider. So um, let's take a few shots with this bow. Actually, I'm going to draw it back and show you what it looks like at full draw. One thing that I did learn, and I'm sure most of you know this, uh, but... I'm a 28 inch draw with a, with a compound bow. So if you look at this video here, you can see me at full draw. This is drawing my Bowtech solution. And um, of course I'm using a, a re release aid. And um, so I'm drawing 28 inches on this bow. Now when I draw uh, this recurve, you can see um, I'm at full draw here in this video with my recurve. Um, but I'm not quite drawing 28 inches. I have a, um, an arrow that I put a piece of tape around it. I marked from the throat of the knock and I measured, put measuring points every half inches uh, so that I can tell how long a draw length is and I can measure out arrows for people and that type of thing when I'm building arrows. Um, but that will tell me what my draw length is. So based off of, off of that information and videoing myself, I determined I'm about 26 inches is all that I'm drawing with a recurve. Um, so a little bit shorter than I had first thought. So 
Um, when you look at this video and you see me drawing my recurve, um, I'm really only drawing about 26 inches, and that's from, from the front of the riser. So um, I'm always anchoring uh, with middle finger in the corner of my mouth. I shoot with uh, three fingers under with a tab, and uh, that's just the way that I've always done it. So um, use that for some information when you're watching these videos. So again, um, take a look again here. You can see me coming to full draw. This is with the 60 inch Smoky. And uh, you can see what that bow looks like at full draw. When we pause it here, you can take a look and see that. Okay, um, I'm gonna shoot a few arrows with this so you can kind of get a feel for that, for how that is gonna work as well. Okay, the next bow that we're gonna take a look at is the 58 inch Solomon Recurve. If you've been on my website, you may have noticed uh, the names of my bows, where they come from. I named them all after waterways here in Northwest Kansas. We're kind of a dry area and there's not a lot of rivers in Northwest Kansas, but we do have uh, the Solomon. The Solomon has two forks. And so I've got a 58 inch and a 62 inch in the Solomon. Uh, we've got the Celine, which is my longbow, and then we've got the Smoky Hill River, which runs just south of me here, and that's where the name of the Smoky came from. But this bow here is the 58-inch Solomon. It's a little bit shorter bow. It works really nice for uh, hunting in compact, tight spaces, you know, maybe out of a tree stand, out of the ground blind, or if you're just hunting on the ground. Um, it's a little bit smaller, compact bow, and it's one that I really like to use for hunting. Um, the beret side on this bow here is showing up at eight and a quarter inches. And I like to be right around eight, um, eight to eight and a quarter inches on this bow is, is kind of where I prefer to be. But of course you do have a little bit of adjustment that you can, you can adjust that to fit, fit, uh, fit your style, how you would like to have that set up. Um, again, let's take a look at the video here of me at full draw with the 58 inch Solomon. You can see um, again, my draw length is 28 inches. I'm only drawing about 26 inches with the with a recurve here, and you can see what the bow looks like at full draw. You get too much longer than that um, with your draw length, and this bow might not fit you quite as well, being that it is a little bit shorter bow. I'll take a few shots here with the 58 inch Solomon and uh, give you a feel for what it looks like and sounds like at the shot. Okay, so the third and final bow that we're gonna look at is the 62 inch Solomon. Okay, the Solomon bows are what I consider to be a 50s style recurve, or at least my rendition of one. It's got a little bit slimmer profile grip. Um, it is still kind of contoured and shaped, similar to what the Smokey would be, but it is a little bit slimmer and a little bit smaller in your hand. Um, I, I really like both of them. I don't have a personal preference over either one of them. I shoot them both just as well. It's just really what you're looking for in a bow. This bow is going to be a little bit lighter to where the Smokey is going to have a little bit more mass and a little bit more weight to it. Um, brace height on this bow. Let's take a look and see. Uh, this is coming in at eight and a half. So, you know, anywhere between I would say seven and three quarters would be pretty pretty short on this, but eight to eight and a half inches is, is a good place to be for your brace height on, um, on the Solomon recurve. If you have a little bit of a longer draw length, this is a 62 inch bow. This is gonna fit you a little bit better than what the 58 inch bow would. It is gonna be a little bit longer. It's gonna be not as maneuverable if you're hunting in tight spaces, um, but it is gonna be a nice, nice forgiving bow and a little bit easier to shoot being a little bit longer bow as well. So if you look at the video here, this is me at full draw. We'll pause it again. Me at full draw with uh, the 62 inch Solomon. Again, I have a 28 inch draw, but I'm only drawing about 26 inches, I believe, here with the, with the Solomon recurve. And you can see the angle of the limb tips is not, um, not quite as vertical as what it would be on the 58 inch uh, Solomon, the 58 inch Solomon. Okay, we'll take a few shots with this bow and uh, show you what it looks like and sounds like shooting the 62-inch Solomon.
Okay, one thing that I will mention is I always cut my shelf to center. So all the, the shelves are cut to center, and that's a question that I get quite a bit as well. Um, I don't go past center typically just to uh, make sure that I have structural integrity in the bow, but I do cut everything to center. And then um, I either use a leather rest or I use a bare hair rest. And uh, I do a radius shelf. So the shelf is radius. I don't know if you can see that at all. It does have a slight um, radius to it here. And um, I'm going to take these bows to the draw board and um, develop some draw curves for, for you and share that information with you as far as so you can see what weight it's pulling back at different draw lengths. Now these bows are all set up at different different peak weights at 28 inches. The 58 inch Solomon is right around 43 pounds. This bow is close to 50 pounds. This is a 62 inch Solomon and it's close to 50 pounds at 28 inches. And then the 60 inch Smokey is right around 45 to 46 pounds at 28 inches. So they're not, they're not all, um, I guess, apples to apples as far as that goes, but you can see what the bow's doing at different draw lengths based off of this information. Okay, so I took each of these three bows, went to my draw board with them and um, measured the weight of each bow starting at 20 inches on up to 29 inches. And you know, I didn't figure that I needed to start at brace or just beyond brace. So I started at 20 inches to kind of get just a basic um, curve started. So you can kind of see what each bow is going to look like at the different draw weights. Now with the 58 inch Solomon, I'd stopped at 28 inches. Um, it was starting to stack on me quite a bit there and being a shorter bow, and I didn't like the angle of the bow. Just, I didn't want to really go beyond that. I didn't want to push it beyond that. So probably could have, but I just felt like I better stop and give you an idea of what it's going on um, up to that point. So I developed an Excel spreadsheet, which you can see here. And we'll start at the top with the 62 inch Solomon. You can see at 20 inches, um, I had 32.4 pounds. And again, this isn't um, a scientific or very exact, you know, I could have been a quarter inch off either way, um, but I tried to get as close as I could and try to get as accurate of a reading as I could with this. And then off in the, in the green column there, you see the difference at each weight. So between 20 inches and 21 inches, I gained 1.8 pounds. And um, we're pretty close there, 1.8, 2.3, 2.2. I mean, that could all be within the margin of error as far as a half a pound per inch and stayed pretty linear all the way through on the on the 62 inch Solomon. You look at the, the draw weight chart there um, next to it and you can see um, you know see that is pretty well just kind of a gradual line climbing all all the way up. I did chart the difference just so you could kind of see what that looked like as well. You can see it climbed a little bit and then um, it kind of dropped back down and then it climbed up again and then it kind of dropped back down again uh, but it was pretty steady you know Looking in the yellow box, it ranged from 1.6 to 2.8 as far as the difference um, per inch and with an average of about 2.15 per inch. And I think that really shows up when you look at the green column of 1.8, um, 2.3, 2.2 is really right close to that 2.15. So it shows a pretty linear with the 62 inch Solomon. Now if we go down to the 58 inch Solomon being a shorter bow, um, Looking at, and of course this is a lighter peak weight bow too as well, uh, but 20 inches we were at 24.7, and then we stayed pretty steady. We gained 1.8 per inch all the way down until we got to 28 inches, and then we took a big jump. So that's where that bow starts to stack on us. Um, you can see, looking at the, the draw weight chart, you can see how the, it starts to get a little bit steeper there towards the end, and then when you look at the difference, we're pretty linear all the way across right up to um, 27 inches and then we take a big jump up and that shows up in the, the yellow box there as well showing our range of 1.5 to 4.6 um, which but if you look at our averages down below um, up to 28 inches we average 2.5 but up to 27 inches we only average 1.7 so it was really um, not much much of a difference Per inch, it was pretty light per inch, 1.7 all the way up to 27. Once we got it up beyond that, that's what threw off our average. So, um, if you've got a, sh a shorter draw weight, you know, I'd say up to 28 inches, the 58 inch Solomon's going to be a great bow for you. If you're drawing longer than that, um, you might want to look at something a little bit longer as far as the length of your bow. And now for the Smoky, the 60 inch Smoky, down here at the bottom, looks a lot like what you see on the 62 inch Solomon. 
Um, the chart with the draw weight is just pretty well a straight line all the way across. Our differences are really close all the way through 1.9, 1.6. You know, our range is only from 1.6 to 2.5, so less than a pound of range. And again, I could be off a little bit either way. So that could just be within the margin of error as far as me um, checking the bow at different, different inches. But this is the data that I collected with an average of 2.15. And if you look back up here, our average was 2.15 on the 62-inch Solomon as well. Um, looking over at the difference, pretty well follows this same graph um, as the draw weight does. So we're, we're looking at kind of the same linear line. Yes, there's a little bit of ups and downs, but there's nothing that really jumps up that shows me, wow, there's a big stacking anywhere. So, you know, up to 29 inches, I don't see the bow stacking really anywhere. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of data and a little bit inf more information to dig into these bows and um, show you what they look like at different draw lengths and different draw weights. One question that I get asked quite often that I find kind of funny um, is guys will ask me, well, you know, you build traditional bows, but yet you still silk and serve as compound bows. And how does that work? You know, you've, you've kind of got to pick one side or the other. And I don't really feel like I do. Um, the name of my business is Coyote Creek Archery. It's not Coyote Creek Traditional Archery. It's not Coyote Creek Modern Archery or Compound Archery. It's just archery. And so to me, I'm just, I enjoy the flight of the arrow. I enjoy shooting all kinds of bows. Um, I love you know building bows. I'm a woodworker uh, by trade, and so that's uh, that's just me. So I really don't I don't pick sides on that, and I don't feel that we should pick sides. I feel that we should band together and work together. Uh, we shouldn't be um, you know be calling compound bows training wheels or saying that a long bow or a recurve is a real bow and not a toy bow. Those types of things. We need to work together and make sure that we're fighting for the same cause because um, there's a lot of people out there that are fighting against us. Uh, to take away our right to, to enjoy the outdoors and to hunt. So I want to make sure that, that we're working together on that. So I, I don't pick sides. Um, I love both of them. I hunt with both of them. I hunt with a rifle at times. Um, it's just personal preference, but I just love to be outdoors, love to be around archery, and uh, helping to get other people excited about it as well. Now, I do get asked quite a bit about crossbows. Uh, a lot of, there's a lot of interest in that, and um, I could probably go full-time just working on crossbows if I wanted to, but I do not do any work uh, or sell or sales or anything like that with crossbows. I've really never had any interest with that. I've never shot a crossbow myself. Um, if that's what you do, then great. More power to you. I have no problem with that. If you're doing it ethically and legally, um, go out and, and have fun and um, get outside, but that's just not something that I'm interested in and not something that I've taken up so far. But hopefully that clears up, clears that up for some of you that had those questions as well is I'm just an archery guy and you know I love all of it. So I hope that helps you uh, kind of make a decision on what bow you may be looking at and seeing if one of these bows will be a great fit for you. Uh, if, again, if you have any questions, uh, please give me a call, send me a text or send me an email. Uh, you can find all that information on my website. Be sure to visit the website so you can learn a little bit more about me and, and about what I've got going on here at Coyote Creek Archery. I do appreciate you watching these videos. And um, any way I can be of help of you, I would, I would love to be able to help you out and um, help you to be a little bit more successful in archery and just enjoy this sport a little bit more. So anyway, thank you for watching.